So I decided to pull this wheel off. I think this is the right size wrench. See what we got under here. Of grease in there, <clears throat> which is nice. <clears throat> yeah, those bearings are worn to hell though, but they are greased. So for today, I got the king pins in. But I'm waiting on some other parts to get the tie rods back in and the drag link and all the other stuff. So I'm going to clean up the brake backing plates. And I'm going to try to mount the brakes back on them because I think they could, you can take the backing plate out with the brakes attached to them. I took them apart because I want to clean out all these holes. So I want to clean all this up, make sure everything is working right. The uh, Clean up the actuator which goes down here. The rod comes up, but as you can see, it's all pretty nasty. So I want to clean it up, make sure everything is free before I put it back together. But I'm going to put them on the plate, and then I'll try to put them in the car. So I got some cleaning fluid here. I'm just going to drop these in and let them soak for a while. I got this stuff from uh, Harbor Freight for cleaning up uh, the tie rods and that kind of stuff. Worked really good. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and just clean all this stuff up and we'll put it back together and see how it works. So I'm kind of into the brakes here. I had the front whole backing plate off. You've seen it on the table over there before. Figured I'd just clean it up, get everything working, see where I was at with it. I mean, from what i seen when I took this car apart, the front brakes weren't even working. Everything was screwed up in them. And I was going to redo the whole thing, but I figured, nah, let me just clean it up, see what I end up with. I had to put the shims in here. There was none in the uh, wedge. So to start out with, I was right straight up and down with the actuator arm. So that was no good. Uh, the one of these pins was on backwards. The tracks are worn on the back. It's you know pretty crappy. But like I say, I wanted to clean it up and see what I got. I ended up getting them working all right. But after I put it on here, I know the cover's not on. I just bolted on here to see how it was going to work. Uh, I see one of the pins is longer than the other up here on the top, which that's not going to work. So, I know this is going to work too good. This pin is too long. And everything's got some wear on it. But, you know, it is working. If it wasn't for that pin, I would probably just go ahead and try it. But I also had another problem. So, I found the race had spun in the hub. So, the hub is no good. Both sides. The drums themselves. Eh... 
All right. But I just went ahead and got new hub with the drum pressed on, all ready to go. So I got to paint those up. But that's where I'm at at the front brakes. So I was going to order the kit and redo all this stuff. But I found, uh, I think it was Mike's Affordable Model A. He has the whole thing. But the whole thing is already done. New shoes, everything's rebuilt. It's basically bolted on and adjusted up. So I think I'm probably going to go that route on the front here. I was really hoping to be able to just put these, clean them up, put them on. But anyway, I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and do the front brakes, the whole thing, why a minute. So here's my backing plates. I just got them back. I think they had them about two and a half weeks. Boy, they look like brand new. Powder coated, everything new. So let's get them on the car. Okay, so I got my freshly rebuilt backing plates on. They look pretty good. They're good for the car, really, but I didn't buy them for looks. I bought them for functionality. They replace everything in it, shoes, everything is new. It went on pretty easy. Button it up now. So that's going to be it for that. New backing plate, all new brakes, new drum, hub, bearings, everything except the actuator arm. That was good. There was no wear in the bushing, so that was all right. I didn't have to do anything with that. So I guess we'll be on to the back ones. Well, I was going to buy a hub puller, but I got lucky on the other side with this setup. Let's see if I get lucky on this one. Okay, let's see what happens. It worked. So you see me pull the back hub off with a regular, uh, well, the three jaw puller, but I only had two on it. It came right off pretty easy. And naturally, when I get in there, the uh, service brakes don't really look too bad. I think I'm going to go with that so far, cleaning them up, and they should work except for one thing. But the other problem was, once I pull the hub off, the emergency brake, the whole system is gone. The only thing I got left is a lever, which uh, that's not a big deal. You can get the whole kit and put them back together, which I will be doing. And uh, clean up the back ones. They look like they're going to be all right so far, except for naturally the uh, bushing. And that was the when I did the grease job, that was the one grease fitting that still had the old one on it, the original. And so it probably hasn't been greased in 50 years. And it's got some wear on it. So I'm going to pull these off, order the whole uh, emergency brake kit. It looks like it comes with everything you need. And I'm going to do the bushings on the uh, service brake and the e-brake. Why I got it off. That way this whole back brake system will be done. The rods look all right. I might replace them anyway. The eyes, I'm surprised. The uh, 
eyes and clevises were all good. They're not really worn. The clevis pins had a little wear to them, but the uh, clevis itself didn't. So hopefully I can go with the original brake rods. Anyway, on to this. So these bolts to hold the backing plate on are giving me some trouble. I got one of them off. I got one of them off. And what's happening is the head on the inside bolt behind the backing plate, it's pretty shallow. So when you put the socket on it, the socket's tapered inside and you're only getting about half of it and it keeps falling off. And the other issue is the same thing on the bolt down here. I got those two, but they're recessed in and this one's a little messed up at the top. So I had the same trouble with the socket. It's recessed in and I'm not getting enough of a bite on it. Luckily I had some old tools around. I took it down. I don't know whether you can see it. I ground it off flat so all the teeth are getting on the inside one. And then for the outside, I did the same thing. I ground it down to where all the teeth are right at the edge and then took a little bit off of here so it'll fit into that hole a little bit. So let's see how I do. Luckily, I had some of these old sockets from the cheap set around. Plus, I had trouble holding it, so I got these boards set up here. So when I get it on, Ooh. Oh, wow, wow, no, oh. damn, that's tight. <sighs> okay. Well, that worked. That worked. Yeah, nuts a little. It's a little rounded off around here. Not too bad, but it just isn't much to grab it from. So now I got myself a couple of customized tools for this. All right, I'm going to shut the camera off to get the next one. That was the one I was fighting with for a while. And there was just no way to keep that socket on. But grinding it off did the trick. Well, as hard as that first one came out, this one came out easy. Real easy. Okay, the emergency brake shaft is pretty worn on this one. The service brake, it's not too, neither one of them are too bad, but hey, I got it out, we're doing it. Clean them up, put it back together. Okay, I'm having some trouble with the bushings on the uh, emergency brake. They're worn so thin, there's nothing to push from. I think I'm going to have to score it here and try to peel it off and take it off in pieces. But let's see what I end up with. Okay, I got it started. I ground it down as thin as I could with this cheap old Dremel. I didn't have a bit to fit my good one. But... It was enough to get it stored. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. There we go, it's coming apart. There it is. Okay, so I got the rear backing plate all redone. New bushings for the uh, cam arm and the e-brake. Everything went pretty smooth. I had a little trouble with the e-brake, and I'll show you on the other side when I go to put that one on. Actually, two things with the e-brake. But the, the uh, service brake seems to be working fine. I had I did have to replace the cam arm and everything. I couldn't get the other one out and it was beat up. So I replaced them on both sides. Um, the tracks for the brakes weren't really bad on this uh, on the uh, back ones like the front ones were. So I think we're going to be good. But I'm going to show you a couple things with the uh, e-brake on the other side. So the one thing with the emergency brake, with the band, you want it to fit tight. The springs pull it in some, but if it's not fitting tight against the uh, carrier, when you release the brake, it just kind of stays open. I ran into that trouble on the other side. So you want it when it's if you should be you want to be able to put it on there and have it lay flat on its own. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this and just bend it. Just a little bit. Because you don't want to deform it either. Now what I found on the other side was I got this real good, but the ends were sticking up. So I had to bend it kind of in here. But you don't want to kink, you don't want to bend it too much. Just a little bit. Let me see how this fits now. sitting up right on the carrier and it's not sticking up here where they meet and it's not you know it's nice and smooth there this thing is it should be good because before it was kind of too big for it and you got it rounded but then when you got it rounded it would stick up at the ends you gotta watch out you don't want that so the next hard thing i mean Getting that thing rounded on here wasn't hard, but if you don't know, you could waste your time putting it together and it won't work. But anyway, it's putting the shaft in. The shaft goes in here, and after you put the shaft in, you have a little bit of room back there that you have to knock the uh, key in here in this slot. You have to slide this spring on between the uh, arm and the backing plate. I got it backwards right now, but I think I don't know. it doesn't matter. Then you put the shaft on, tighten that up. Then you have to stretch this spring over the arm. And believe me, that was not easy until I custom made a tool. After struggling with it for a little bit, I, uh, I could get a screwdriver on it, but I couldn't quite pull it over. So I found an old screwdriver and I customized it. You can see right here, I just cut a little slot in it with the Dremel. So once you get everything in, you can get in. You have to go between this rail here. But once you get everything in, then you can pull the spring over it. It's still not that easy, but it's doable. So I'm going to put the arm in and knock this key in. Try to get it somewhat together. And then we'll see from there. Is that how I did it? Now, the last time I slid it between 
this frame part. Somehow I got on it to hold it to be able to take this off. There, like that. And then you go through here, this little V here, and catch it down there. Oops. And don't lose it. Remember exactly how we did it now. Then you get behind it and hopefully push it over before it falls off. <laughs> oops, oops, almost lost it. I got it over it, but I can't get it down. There we go. Oh, wow. So now I'm going to take my half inch wrench, tighten up that clamp bolt on the uh, arm. I don't really know why I left it off before, but I figured out hey, you never know, you might have to take it apart again. But you do have to put that spring on. You have to put the you can you have to put the arm on for the uh, service brakes before you put the backing plate back on the car. But the emergency brake has to go on after you put it on the car. I couldn't get it off with the uh, emergency brake lever still on it, so it doesn't make it very easy. The reason I mention that I was just watching a guy on YouTube doing it he was doing it on the bench but i didn't get to the part where he realized he couldn't put it back on the car with that on there that spring is a real project to get on there okay so that looks good there's the e-brake and the service brake Okay, so I got the back brakes all on. I got the uh, drum back on and I torqued it down. I did replace the bearings in the drum too, or in the hub. Tighten down, seems all right. And all I gotta do is throw the cotter pin in. I used a shim. Um, this type of shim on the uh, axle. I put one on it, there wasn't one on it before, and it looked all right when I took it off. But the other side, the other side, it was it's sitting way in the back. And I put that one on, I didn't torque it down yet, and I only used one shim, but I think before I even do it, I'm gonna take that off and put, a, put two shims in it. Because that one, this one moved in quite a bit after I, when I was torquing it down. And when I took the other one off, it sat way back there. So I know that was that one's too close. Well, so the gist of this story is I took it off, put two on, and it just seemed like it was going to be too far out. <laughs> but, like I say, it's a learning experience here. Set right, let's see. I think that was 125. <clears throat> oh, figures. The hole couldn't be further off for the cotter pin. <sighs> This one might be a little over. <sighs> there we go, that's good. All right.
cotter pins and I think I'm ready to put some wheels back on here. It'll be nice to see at least one wheel on it, two wheels on it. Now I think I'm on to service brake cross crossbar up under the floor there. I took it off to replace the bushings. That's where I'm heading now. So I got the brake cross shaft out with much difficulty. One bolt you couldn't get to. Uh, you can see the bushings are worn. I hope the shaft isn't worn because I don't want to get involved in taking these off. I got the uh, split bushings to put back on it. But for now, I'm, I'm going to clean it up cut these off with a Dremel. Hopefully I'll get lucky and I won't have to remove these. Okay, so I got it cleaned up. I got this clamped down to the table with it kind of locking in place. I'm going to make a cut across it right here. Do the other side, try to split it off. and hope the shaft isn't worn too bad. So let's find out. So, that came off pretty easy. I found something I didn't expect. I guess the inside, these must be original. The inside is the same thing that's used there, or similar to what was used in the steering column bushing. And the shaft looks good, it don't look worn. And I have my, oh man, did I get lucky here. That's great. Perfect fit. So here's my brake cross rod or cross bar. I don't know what it's called. But I got the old bushings off, which I think were original to the car. They were very similar to what the steering column bushing was. Had that wick in there that was soaked with oil. But they were shot. Didn't want to get involved in taking these off. So I bought the brass split bushing. I guess they're pretty commonly used. Luckily, my shaft is not worn, so I got a good fit on there. And these come in a package, and they're paired up. So I assume you have to keep them, the two together. They, they have red paint on one side, so I'm assuming that's the way they go. This is a pair. The other one is a pair. So, since I'm not going to be doing any fancy work to this... I'm going to get under the car and try to put this beast back in, which getting that one side out around the muffler was a real project. Well, brakes are all on, wheels back on, everything put back together. I actually adjusted the brakes up and it went fairly smooth. I pretty much went with the instructions in the Les Andrews book, the red book, with one little alteration. In the book here, he shows you how to make the uh, adjusting board. Um, there's three different settings on it. First one is supposed to be an inch down from its resting. And then each notch after that is a half inch. And you put it on the first notch, which is an inch down. You adjust the back brakes up till you get a little drag on them. You don't touch the front ones. You want those still spinning free. Then you go to the second notch, and you should get a heavy drag on the back brakes and a slight drag on the front ones. And then you go on down to the third notch. The back brake should be locked up. The front brake should have a real heavy drag. And I did that. And when I got done, what I found was when I released the pedal, it was still dragging a little bit after the adjustments. So I went back. And instead of making this one, the first one, one inch, I made that two inches and then a half inch, half inch. And I looked at a Paul Shin video and he does it the same way at two inches. And anyway, it worked out. I adjusted them up and they seem good. Now, if you look at the Paul Shin videos, he adjusts the adjuster on the back of the backing plate until you just, just start to get a slight drag on it. And then he backs them off three notches and then does all the adjustments on his through the uh, rods. 
keeps you know tightening the clevises and he goes through the same steps here but he starts at two inches and he goes through the same steps but another thing he does different is he has the front brakes and the back brakes evenly adjusted where the Les Andrews has a, a heavier drag on the back brakes. And when the back brakes are locked, the front ones should be not locked. They should just be very, really hard to turn. Um, which is better? I don't know. I think I'm kind of liking the Paul Shins way, although I did it the Les Andrews way, except for the, uh, except for the one inch space here. I did two. But if you're doing it the Paul Shins way, the, it's a lot of work and you really need two people to do it because you're out from under, you got to get out front of the car, take the, the, uh, the adjusting board in and out so many times you really need two people to do that. And I didn't have two people to time, but anyway, I did it the way I said, except for the way Les Andrews has it, except for the one inch. I got two inches at the top of the pedal. And, uh, I did have the car out for a ride. My first ride will be in a future video, but I had it out for a ride and I only went up the road and I probably didn't even go a half mile round trip because this is all new to me. I never even drove a Model A before and it, it hand, actually the steering was good. Uh, the brakes, well, you know, I don't know what they're supposed to be like. They worked and I didn't realize it until I got back on the ride, but they didn't pull. So I must've got it adjusted pretty decent. Although I didn't go that fast, I probably didn't really go over 25. But for now, I'm leaving this alone after I get a few more miles on it. Then I might start fooling with the front ones. Maybe I'll tighten them up a little bit and make it more like the Paul Shins adjustment is. Because uh, the brakes are they're, they're hard, but you know they're mechanical brakes. I don't really know what they're supposed to be like. I never drove one before, so it stopped and it didn't pull. That much I can tell you. But anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. This is a whole new experience for me, and it's been kind of interesting. Anyway, in my next video, I started up, and I had some issues with that, but you'll see it. And that's my first drive of a Model A in that video. This past weekend, I met a couple of guys at a local car show that had Model A's. Kind of funny, they did the same thing. Both of them, when they bought their Model A's, they had no idea, knew nothing about them. Nothing about them. And that's where I am now. I know nothing about them, but I'm learning quick. And uh, I hope you enjoy seeing somebody with no experience in them messing with them. Anyway, take care and stay safe.